Uh, hello everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming here today's uh, webinar. And uh, I think there is some like a miscommunication uh, from us. Like uh, I guess uh, there were uh, two link. Uh, so some of them like you know went to the wrong link and they are like uh, misplaced. So I think. Uh, but I uh, invite them to uh, come here, so we will we'll, uh, like wait for them like five minutes more, and uh, I'm going to start this uh, training session for Cable State Bridge uh, at 3:05. Uh, thanks for your patience. Uh, again, I'm going to start this training session at 3:05. Uh, all right, everyone, I will just start uh, this training session. Um, my name is Lucas Park. I'm working for uh, MyDays, and uh, this is, uh, this cable state bridge is uh, one of the series uh, from the 2016 MyDays Complex Bridge uh, Test Drive event. So, today, uh, as you can see, uh, we are going to go over the cable state bridge uh, through MyDays Civil. Uh, I will give you uh, like a basic concept, uh, but uh, most of the time I will just give you the like real-time application uh, examples in MIDAS Civil, and then uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, demonstrating uh, training sessions. So first of all, I'm going to go over the, how you can uh, create a, a, a KBC bridge uh, through MIDAS Civil, and I will introduce what is the auto-adjusting uh, auto cable pretension forces. And then I'll uh, going over a little bit about the construction stages and uh, uh, talk about the uh, other like uh, cable pretension uh, forces as well. And tomorrow we're gonna have the uh, suspension bridge analysis as well. So if you guys have time, please uh, you know come to our webinar and enjoy it. So always uh, before I start uh, this training session, um, like uh, I would like to introduce uh, who you are as a Midas. Uh, we are. Uh, the biggest uh, CAE program company and we uh, have uh, over the 500 engineers in our company and established around 1989 and we came over to the US market in 2005. So now we are located in New York City. Uh, we uh, like uh, do the marketing for the North America and South America and we also do technical support and engineering work uh, in New York uh, office. And we have uh, eight different branch offices uh, throughout the world, and uh, so uh, we've been like you know working well so far. 
Today we are going to uh, go over the uh, MySQL, but uh, we have a other program which is called MySQLA. Uh, if you guys have interest in uh, advanced nonlinear and uh, detailed analysis system, uh, you can use MySQLA. And if you are the crossover uh, engineer uh, from uh, bridge to uh, the building or like uh, building to uh, bridges. Uh, you might have interest in like Midas Civil, uh, Midas uh, Gen as well. Uh, Midas, Gen, Midas Gen is for uh, building purpose. And we have a program for the geotechnical engineer and a mechanical engineer too. Uh, do, those are the partial list of uh, our clients. And uh, we uh, have uh, like uh, around uh, 30 uh, DOTs in the US as uh, our clients as well. And the Maida Civil is very focused on the uh, the bridge uh, like a purpose. So from here we have a like a you know many like a wizard which uh, can give you uh, like a model really fast and uh, definitely we can do the like analysis and uh, these days we add more like a design and load rating uh, features in Maida Civil, but uh, even if you are not a bridge engineer, you can uh, you know use our program as a general structures. Okay, so we are starting from the finite element model uh, analysis tool. So so far uh, for this event, uh, I covered the uh, steel plate gutter and uh, uh, segmented bridge. And uh, today uh, I'm going to go over the cable shape bridge, and tomorrow I'm going to uh, go over the suspension bridge. So those are the uh, the few uh, projects uh, modeled and uh, analyzed by Maida Silva, and you probably know some of them. Okay, um, so before I start, I want to give you a brief idea how you can uh, activate Maida Silva uh, with uh, which like the procedures. So generally, um, if, you know, uh, you first create a 3D finite element model. Uh, you know, this is for the uh, cable state bridge. So in here, we provide a wizard, and uh, it will help you to uh, you know, shorten your modeling time. And for the cable pretension forces, so I know you guys uh, have experience with a cable state bridge or like, you know, uh, uh, those kind of project, but the first like you know, initial cable uh, pretension forces is uh, getting uh, you know to get the uh, the initial cable pretension uh, forces is kind of hard and uh, kind of make uh, assumptions. So we one of our like uh, functions will help you to uh, get the uh, cable pretension uh, pretension forces, which is called unknown load vectors, and then you move down to cable tuning forces. And you can get more like a specific cable uh, pretension forces from there. And today we are I'm going to introduce four straight uh, stage analysis by using the uh, lab OP force. And I'm going to uh, just talk about uh, this feature as well. And you just keep like a, uh, iterating your model. You know you can just uh, modify the element and uh, uh, material property so on. And uh, you can get the optimized design uh, from the Maya Civil. So today's learning object is the uh, first thing is you're going to know uh, how you can model, how you can make a 3D model uh, for the cable state bridge in Maida Civil. And uh, the next thing is I'm going to demonstrate uh, how you can uh, get the initial cable forces through the unknown load factors. And then I will uh, illustrate how you can use the cable tuning forces. And then lastly, uh, uh, you know, like before using the like forward uh, construction stage analysis, I'm going to show you, uh, like you know, how you can utilize the leg of force uh, in Maida Civil. Okay. Um, so. <clears throat> First of all, Maida Civil, uh, the wizard, cable state bridge wizard, it provides a 2D plane. But from the 2D, uh, you can uh, define the geometry of the bridge, such as cable geometry, your deck geometry, and uh, your pylon uh, geometry. And then you copy those like uh, uh, 
geometry to the other side and you can get the 3D. So you need uh, more work after uh, you uh, use the, the wizard uh, for the cable state bridge, but uh, this is very simple. And if you, your bridge is not symmetric, you can also create a 3D model really easy through the Midas table, just using the node and element, uh, some of the functions to like, you know, like copy or paste or uh, like uh, using the uh, like a project functions, you can get the uh, the 3D model really easy. I'm going to show you this one. And the uh, unknown load factors, this is the initial step in my table to get the uh, cable pretension forces. So here, uh, before you use this, uh, before you use these functions, you need to define the like a uh, dead load or like live load. But after that, uh, you know, like a program will give you the uh, the like you know the draft uh, for the uh, cable pretension forces uh, by using the object function type. So I will talk about this one later on as well. And then once you get the your uh, initial cable uh, pretension forces, and by using the cable tuning forces, uh, you uh, like uh, modify the sum of the cable forces uh, under the uh, sum of the constraint you define on here. So for example, uh, what constraints you can define is a beam and a truss forces, and a displacement or stresses. And the, the last one is for the, uh, the forward uh, construction stage analysis. Uh, you're going to use a leg of the force uh, functions. So as you can see, assume that uh, this is the cable and this uh, node is attached to the pylon and this one is attached. attached uh, to the uh, the deck, and when the construction stage is goes to the end, the pylon will uh, sway a little bit uh, from left to right, right to to left. So in that case, the cable geometry will be different uh, from the very first stage. So in that case, there is extra like displacement taking place. So program will automatically calculate this uh, like uh, the displacement and uh, the required more required pretension forces. Uh, uh, for you. And uh, the next thing is, this one is for the truss and uh, for the beam. As you can see, actually the when the, there is a, like a forces uh, applied on the cables, there will be some like uh, beam displacement as well. In that case, my receiver will accurately uh, calculate the, this displacement for you. Now I'm going to open up the Midas civil and then I'm going to show you how you can create a 3D model. Uh, so the first thing is you have to define the material and section property. This is the demo and I just uh, created some of the, uh, the cable material property and gutters and pylons which are uh, the tower and uh, C beam means a center beam. Uh, between the girders. I mean that this one I can call it like a transverse beam and uh, C beam for the pylon Let's say there is a two pylon and you you can uh, I will put the like the center beam between the two pylons And uh, those are the sections on here and first thing uh, Is you have to go to cable state bridge wizard And you can see this uh, wizard uh, interface so first thing I want to mention is if your bridge is uh, like a symmetric or asymmetric, you can choose and you can define the, your bridge model. So the, you can see the A, A node and B node and C node and D node, right? So A means it's uh, like a starting point at the deck, the coordinate, which is X and Z plan. So this is a 2D. And then B is the, the peak point at the pylon, and C is the uh, peak point at the pylon as well. And D is the ending point of the deck. So I choose the symmetric bridge. That's why C and D are like a grayed out because those uh, like uh, coordinate is automatically calculated in the, this wizard. But if you are uh, creating the asymmetric bridge, uh, you have to tell the program the C and D coordinate as well. And also H1, uh, which represent the, the height of the pilot. And uh, here also like H2, D1, 
this is a symmetric, so you don't really need to put the like you know h two uh, the like uh, dimensions on here. And the next thing is uh, you tell the program what is the material property and a section property. So material property for the cables, um, like I defined already. So I choose the cable and a bag of uh, bag is for the gutters and tower is a pylon. So I choose the material and section property on here. And so select the cable element type. This one I just use the truss because like what I'm right after I uh, created this model, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the uh, very initial uh, cable pretension forces. So like in that case, you don't really need to uh, think about the like a geometric uh, uh, like you know because uh, I'm going to analyze the very finer uh, stage model. So the truss model, a truss element is enough to use to get the uh, initial cable pretension forces on here. And then when you go down a little bit, uh, you can also put the like a slope uh, from the left and an arc and a right, and you can put the a slope by using the percentage on here. And you tell the program where uh, where are uh, where cables are located uh, from the uh, left. So you, you can see here, uh, I put the like a 3.6576. This is the, the very first um, the cable uh, will be located. And you also give the height on here. So this uh, distance is just like the x uh, axis and the uh, height is uh, just like the z axis. And uh, after you just define uh, those numbers, and when you go to like uh, a drawing, uh, click the drawing and uh, click update and draw. You can see uh, those like you know like a 2D plan of the cable state bridge on here. And then once I click OK, I get the uh, the 2D plan of the cable state bridge on here. So today uh, the example model um, the deck width uh, will be a uh, 15 uh, 15 meters. So this is 2D. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going from now on, I'm going to make this one as a 3D. So first of all, I will select all because I'm going to copy whole this uh, portion to the other side. So after I select all and I go to node and element. And uh, today I'm going to use a mirror uh, like the functions. So once I click this one, as you can see, uh, there is a reflection information you need to uh, put on here. So this one is, uh, like I said, is a Z and X plane. So select the Z and X plane and uh, with a, like a Y. Uh, so you're going to give the offset from here. So I'm going to make the uh, 15 feet uh, um, 15 feet deck uh, width. So this one is uh, like a reflected to the other side so I need to put the like a 15 divided by 2 which is a 7.5 meters on here so which make the like a 15 feet uh, deck width on here and uh, as you can see uh, uh, the other side there is the same cable geometry is created on here and the next thing is I'm going to um, like uh, connect those girders by the uh, transverse element uh, for the deck. So first of all, uh, I'm going to use the project uh, functions on here. So you can see the project. Once I click the project, and you can find the, uh, um, uh, excuse me, uh, it's not a project. It's uh, like uh, I have to use the uh, create element. and. Uh, Uh, give me a second. Yeah, it was the extrude. I'm sorry. So I'm going to use the extrude uh, functions on here. So here, uh, you can select the extrude type, which is uh, the from the node. Uh, from the node, I'm going to make a line element. So first of all, I will just activate the only gutter portions on here. Go to uh, uh, works and uh, uh, double click the gutter section on here, and then activate the, this portion only and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the one portions 
So from each node, there is a line it extrude, uh, extrude on the other side. So I will select the discutter portion. And then first the material is the center beam of the gutter. And a section also center beam of the gutter. And then you have to give the offset. Uh, so it will be a 15 meter on here. And uh, click apply. As you can see, there is a transverse element is created on here. Now I activate all. And then uh, I'm going to put the like uh, center beam between the pilot. So first, I will just uh, uh, like a, uh, activate on the pylon portions on here. So go to section and double click the pylon and uh, activate only this part. And I will divide this one as uh, like a three element. This element, uh, I will just uh, locate, uh, find the like location of the this uh, each. Uh, I mean the the location of the center beam. So go to node and element again and. <clears throat> Here you can find a divide element and I will make this one as a three segmented beam on here. And then I will just connect the uh, those two beams uh, between those two nodes. I will uh, connect by the center beam of the pilot. So here I will create the element. Uh, and uh, here you can see the center beam uh, pylon for the material and center beam pylon for the uh, sections. And I will connect those uh, two nodes. And you can see uh, this cable state bridge uh, can be easily and uh, uh, easily like created. So depending on your project, uh, you can use the MITRE silver differently, but uh, like a uh, Cable state bridge widget will give you the some like initial a uh, point to uh, create a bridge model really easy and uh, really fast. Uh, so uh, to summarize so far, um, I just uh, created this bridge model uh, through the 2D plane uh, cable state bridge widget and I copy and paste into the other side and I just uh, create the transverse element for the deck and then. I uh, like uh, find uh, where I'm going to put the like a center beam of the center beam of the pilot, and then I just connect those uh, two uh, like a node uh, to create the center beam uh, of the pilot. So this is the real uh, simple example, but I'm going to use the real uh, uh, like application to uh, give you the uh, how you can define the uh, unknown load factors to get the, uh, the initial uh, cable uh, pretension forces. So here, as you can see, this model, uh, like a first over, uh, give me a second. So first of all, uh, uh, so like um, you know, a person who modeled this bridge model will create the uh, this 2D plane first, and then copy to uh, the other uh, locations, like uh, two locations on here, and he uh, has the cutter information when he created this bridge model uh, through the widget, and then he just uh, ext extrude the, the, his like transverse element. Uh, to other locations. So it is kind of you know different model, but the thing is uh, the modeling process and a modeling procedure is the same as the before. Now uh, we have the bridge model and then if you want to run, uh, after you run the analysis, uh, when you go to cable control here and I click the unknown load factors, So uh, you can find uh, this dialog box, but let me uh, just explain the how uh, the load uh, definition is going on on here. So the first thing is
you can see the like a self weight on here, right? So self weight means it's the self weight of the pylon and girders and uh, some of the uh, the center beam on here. And uh, here uh, you can see the like a uh, uh, select load case uh, for the uh, pretension load. So I just define those things as a just a, as a unit load as a one to use the like unknown load vectors. And then you can see uh, the there here are the uh, barrier load is defined it, uh, at the uh, edge of the deck on here. So can you see that right? And then um, I go to uh, the result and I go to cable control and I just select the unknown load vectors on here. The first thing is uh, you need to define the constraint. So you can see the constraint. So this unknown load factors will be optimized uh, under the uh, the constraint uh, you define on here. So you can uh, make the uh, you can uh, choose multiple like constraint. So among these options, if you like to uh, constrain the you are like a support reaction you can uh, choose on here or like uh, some of them use the displacement or some of them use the trust force but here uh, today's example I use the beam forces select the beam forces and then the component is uh, beam forces I just use the uh, moment values at the strong axis and then uh, here inequality which uh, tell the program what is upper bound and lower bound so for the upper bound, I'm going to use the 1,000, and uh, for the lower bound, I will use the negative uh, negative 10,000 for the moment values on here. And then this one is just like opening up the dialog box, and you can see uh, it's very uh, tedious to uh, define the uh, all the like uh, values on here. So in that case, what you can do is uh, go to table, and you can find a beam force. So this one is uh, like uh, the compatible to uh, the Excel, Microsoft Excel. So you can just uh, you know enter those like information in the Excel and copy and paste it into here as well. So you can create the, this uh, constraint uh, very easy and a very uh, like uh, shortly. And then you already defined uh, like some of the cable uh, like uh, cable uh, groups on here. So here are like 16 groups on here. And uh, here, there is no factors yet. And uh, those are, I already know the barriers and uh, self-weight. This one I will make as a one, load factor as one, because uh, we already know those things. But I just make the, those, uh, the, the cable uh, groups as uh, unknown load factors. And then you uh, go to get unknown load factor icon. And you can see uh, here some of the load factors on here. So, like I said, uh, just the cable forces, I just uh, define it as a one, as a one unit load. So, for the uh, CT1, uh, in this group, I make the unit load as a one. So, after you upload this information to the uh, MIDAS civil, uh, your like uh, cables, uh, presentation forces uh, will be. Uh, like a 450 by multiplied by the load factors on here. Or like you can see here, make load combinations. I will make it as a, a non load factor. So uh, this unknown load factors uh, will be optimized by Mira Silva, and you can. Uh, get the very you know good like initial uh, draft uh, for the uh, cable pretension forces on here. So if I go to a uh, load combination on here, and uh, here I make the unknown load factors on here, right? So for the uh, the cables in uh, group uh, CT1, uh, the factors is uh, factor is 450. So the cable forces will be uh, 450. Uh, kilonewtons on here. So those are uh, those values, uh, you know, optimized by Midas Civil. 
and then you can uh, like uh, make a more like accurate the uh, cable forces uh, by using the cable uh, force tuning on here. Let me just click the uh, cable force tuning on here. And a load combination, I just uh, make the, uh, the load combination, I mean unknown load factors. And I select this one and you can see the all the like cable forces on here. So uh, I will just uh, like uh, uh, make the two of uh, the constraint today. So, and the first thing is you can select the uh, uh, the constraint. What uh, what types of the constraint you want to use? And I just use the, uh, the like a beam force. I use the moment values on here, and uh, go to result two. I will use the like a displacement information for uh, cable tuning on here. Right. So the first thing is I'm going to uh, enter the the uh, lower bound and upper bound on here. So I will make this one as a lower bound. It I will make as a negative two thousand. And upper bound I will enter the one thousand. And I click the show range, and you can see red dot is a, like a boundary on here. And uh, for the uh, the deflection values, uh, I will just uh, make it as uh, zero uh, from the uh, negative point uh, one to zero, and you can see uh, under this uh, <coughs> uh, like under this constraint, I'm going to uh, tuning the cable forces on here. And next thing is I'm going to uh, turn on the influence line. And once I click the influence line, uh, let's say for the uh, the cable group uh, S7, CT7. And once I click this one, you can see the like uh, influence line is around the like a blue moment values, right? So this one says once I just uh, like change the value at the CT7, this um, like. Um, these values you can see on here. These blue values. If I just increase these numbers, this uh, uh, blue. I mean, this moment values will uh, goes up uh, as well on here. So let me just uh, give you some uh, like a, like a modification on here. So I will make this one as a uh, like a 1,500 and you can see uh, it this uh, moment values is goes down so if I want to increase this moment values uh, I will just uh, I can just increase the number again so if I just uh, the change the number on here for the cable forces. Uh, this will give a huge effect on this area, on this like locations. So if I increase the number of the cable forces, it will just increase. It will just goes to uh, toward the uh, the green line, which is the influence line. So you can see uh, like some of the uh, the influence line uh, is uh, changing. Like depending on the like the cave forces uh, locations on here, right? Uh, now let me just uh, go down to uh, the displacement on here. So if I just uh, select the sum of them, as you can see, once I just uh, select the CT fourteen, the group, the cable. Uh, the like the um, cable members in the group uh, CT14. If I just increase this cable forces, this displacement will goes up, which is the deflections goes down. So I will make this one as a, a 2500. And as you can see, some of the like you know displacement goes up, and I will just uh, give this one as a, a 4000. As you can see, 
all the like displacement is uh, getting to like a boundary I define on here. So also here we have the like the auto uh, the adjusting functions. So here, uh, first of all, I will just select some of the uh, the cable groups. So if I just uh, select CT7, and you can see at the uh, uh, 90 meters, around the 90 meters, uh, there is uh, some like influence line on here, right? And a CT7 and CT8 also like uh, give a huge effect on the moment values around the 90, and CT9 as well. So I will just select the uh, those like cables, uh, and I'll go to search. You can see the before and after, right? So before is now. I didn't uh, take any actions, but uh, I will just select the CT seven, eight, and nine. And uh, this one is a before CT seven is of uh, seven uh, fifteen hundred, and CT eight is a two thousand, and a CT nine is a seventeen eighty four. So once I click the calculate, and you can see. Uh, once uh, I use these functions, you can see some of the uh, the cable forces at the CT7, CT8, and CT9. They are changed on here, and then here you can get uh, some like a comparison analysis. So before all, just uh, this value is uh, the the sum of the area under the moment uh, line, a moment uh, diagram. So before adjusting the like area under the moment uh, diagram. That was uh, like this much, but it goes down after I adjust uh, uh, to like uh, you know put those values. I, I mean the make the constraint again, and uh, uh, I just uh, adjust the values, and then those are satisfied with uh, the boundary I set up on here. So you know you can also like uh, select the, all of them, and then you can just uh, calculate it. And uh, you can get the uh, different like uh, the cable forces on here as well. And you can see also the area uh, of the moment is goes down as well on here. So by using the uh, unknown load factors, and then you go to cable tuning forces and using the influence line, uh, you can play with the uh, the cable forces, uh, you know, to uh, satisfy the the constraint are you defined on here. So this one is a very first uh, step, very first like a step when the uh, the cable uh, structures, I mean the whole cable state bridge structures are uh, like completed at the final stage by uh, tuning the, your cable tuning forces or by using the unknown load factors, you can get the, the initial uh, cable pretension forces uh, from here. And then the next thing is the uh, I'm gonna show you how you can use a leg of the force. So before I run the analysis, in order to get the values for the uh, leg of the force, um, you have to set up the your uh, like a construction stage analysis uh, differently. So uh, give me a second. And I'll go to like analysis and you can find the construction stage icon on here, right? And then you can find the like initial uh, tangent displacement for erected uh, like the structures. So this one means uh, I'm going to uh, like uh, use, I'm going to uh, like consider uh, the uh, tangent displacement uh, for the, these structures uh, when the construction stage is close to the end. And I just uh, check on the leg of force control and uh, select the uh, groups I make it so LOF which, which means a leg of it and uh, I just uh, uh, grouped uh, make a groups uh, for the all the cable uh, members on here and then uh, also here you have to uh, know uh, this part so once you select the internal force and uh, select the leg of it force in order to reach out to the equilibrium of the construct I and mean the structures, a uh, minus civil will automatically internally they will calculate the uh, the additional uh, like pretension forces. So 
I highly recommend you to use the internal forces or if you want to use the external forces, you have to put more information uh, when the, uh, the, the structure is reach, uh, reaching out to the equilibrium. So I recommend you to use the internal forces. Program will uh, calculate the uh, additional uh, free tension forces uh, on here. And then I run the analysis. So once you set up the, some like construction stage analysis on here, and then run the analysis, and I'll go to result, and I will just check the values on here. And I'll go to construction stage, and you can find the leg of feet, uh, feet force on here, right? And I'll select the truss. So you can find the additional uh, like uh, forces uh, uh, need to be uh, put on here uh, to like uh, you know consider the uh, geometry uh, of the uh, cable state bridge. So you can see the like uh, additional uh, like a uh, like a uh, forces on here. So you can add those like uh, forces on your like cable forces, and when the uh, construction stages are uh, close to the end. Uh, there is no problem with uh, you know getting the like a construction uh, like uh, analysis values uh, on here. So assume that uh, I'm on the construction stage 15, and then I go to deformations, and uh, you can find the uh, some like a legend and a stage and step rear displacement. You have to check on this box if you use the leg of feet forces. And I hit apply. Um, as you can see, uh, some of the deflection occurred on here. And I will just uh, turn on the uh, the deform shape on here. Um, so as you can see, so those are the kind of exaggerated uh, shape on here, but it tells you. Uh, where is the rear displacement, you know, taking place, and you know, where is the maximum on here? And you can see the like the red area. This one has the uh, the most, like the, I mean the 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 huge displacement, you know, occurring at the end of the uh, deck or while the uh, construction stages uh, goes to the end. Let me go to <coughs> another construction stage on here. And you can see uh, those values on here. I just uh, created this model, so it's kind of uh, I don't really put the like uh, engineering perspective on here. But I just want to tell you uh, by using the leg of feet force, and uh, you can get the like uh, you can consider the uh, pylons uh, displacement. So you can uh, get the more exact like you know the like uh, additional pretension forces required. You can know the uh, more like, you know, uh, like more uh, like a pretension forces needed uh, in order to complete the, your construction stage analysis uh, well done. So yeah, this one is a leg of feet force. And then when you go to analysis, so if you use a catenary uh, element for the cable uh, state bridge, or uh, you can also use the like a nonlinear analysis. So it does not give you the one just independent stage. Uh, if you use the like a nonlinear, I mean geometric nonlinearity, you can uh, like you know use uh, these functions uh, for the uh, like uh, every construction stages. So the displacement will be accumulative, so you can get the more accurate research values. So beforehand. Um, for the uh, nonlinear analysis, you have to use a different element, not just using the tension on the element. You you need to use the catenary uh, element for the uh, cables uh, on here. So um, this is the all today about the uh, cable state bridge. Uh, if you guys have a question about this one, uh, like uh, please uh, like uh, send me an email uh, at the Lucas uh, Park and Midas. Uh, it.com or user.com. Uh, I will, uh, you know, I would love to answer your questions. And thanks for coming here again. And uh, have a great day.